Well, hello there, and welcome to Henry Clark's channel. Well, a part of my channel, we try to help you get just that little bit more, you know, out of the band in the box product, right? Well, <laughs> well, today this is this is gonna be short, okay? It's for those of you who are on a budget. Now, I get a lot of comments, and a lot of my comments are from um, an older set of, of musicians who say. Um, you know, I just can't afford something. I'm on a budget, right? You know, and I get that, man. I really do, right? You know, so for this particular session here, right, we're going to do three things to help you get more. And I, I, I actually find them as being essential to using the product effectively. So just three things now is what we're going to use, right? And one of them is free, okay? And it's, this is, again, for those who are more budget conscious or on a budget or don't want to invest a lot of money, right? So... Three things. Number one, tip number one is that whenever we record into a PC, what is our number one issue through our USB port is latency. I see tons of, of, of queries about trying to get the ACO drivers and the settings, you know, accurate because the latency is just, and the latency, if you know latency is that, that delay of sound that you get back through your headphones, right? Well, Here's the deal. In order to do it effectively, you need to have a good USB interface. Now, my recommendation, and I can get it here, my recommendation is a Focusrite USB interface. Not The reason why is because this is the one I've had great success with. I've had great success with the Focusrite series, right? This USB interface is ideal. And there's a link. There's going to be a link in this video that shows you where you can go on Amazon and look up the entire Focusrite suite. This is the solo right here because I do, you know, I do most of the stuff by myself, right? But I mean, I've got my, I've got my XLR import, I've got my headphone jack import, right? And it comes with its own ACO drivers, and I get almost no. Actually, I don't get any latency unless I load up a ton of effects you know, on the channel, and then I might get some latency while I'm recording, right? But from the majority of stuff that I do. Uh, you know, I don't get any latency at all, man. It is such a breeze to plug this thing into my USB port and I am off and running. So again, you must have a good USB interface in order to record effectively. Now that's whether you record into Band in the Box or into a third party application, but get a USB interface. They're inexpensive and it's absolutely worth the money, just in frustration, <laughs> okay? So get that, right? That's number one. Number two. Get a good microphone. Get you a good microphone. I noticed that some of the people, they're using the cheapest microphones they can find. The old Radio Shack versions, right? This is not expensive. It is a Shure SM58. It is an old workhorse. It's been around for quite a while. It's heavy. It's durable. You can drop it on the floor. You can hit somebody the head, inside the head with it. No, I'm just kidding. But it's a very, very good microphone. Very sturdy. Does vocals, does instruments, does everything, right? And again, it's at a price point now where it's really, really achievable. Like I've got the big 7B that, that costs a lot of money, right? But you don't need all of that if you don't want to. You know, this is a budget-conscious microphone. It is high quality. And a lot of the Shure microphones are actually pretty good quality anyway. But I recommend a Shure SM58 microphone. So get you a good microphone is tip number two. However, along with a good microphone, where is it? Where is it? Get your pop screen. These are really cheap, right? But it's worth it. So you take your microphone, of course, put it behind your pop screen, right? So it cuts those it cuts those peas out when you're recording. Sometimes I hear people, you know, and I hear people um, recording, right? And I can tell they didn't use a pop filter because everything is pop, 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 right? So get your pop filter to go in front of your microphone, right? So, and again, those are really, really cheap. You know, and of course, if, you, if you're really cheap, right, you can actually use a coat hanger. You can actually use, people used to do that. They used to actually put nylons over coat hangers, right? And hang the coat hanger in front of their microphone, which actually worked as a pop shield. That's if you're really cheap. And of course, if, you, if, 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 you're, if your significant other has an extra pair of holes laying around. <laughs> so anyway, so you can use that, right? That's tip number two. Tip number three, which is the controversial one, but I don't care because I'm going to be straight with you guys, right? Get you a commercial, widely accepted DAW, a widely adopted DAW, a widely adopted doll. And I don't think that real band is the right one in this case. I think as you grow, you're going to want to do other things. I think that real band in itself 
it's okay. I don't really like it, but it's okay. But it's more geared toward banning the box. But as you do other stuff, you know, you want a commercially widely adopted doll. And I recommend Cakewalk by Band Lab. And there's also a link in this video that'll tell you how to get Cakewalk for Band Lab. It is free. It's free, you know, and it's well worth it. Has some effects built into it has game staging, compressors, has all kind of neat stuff already built into it. And again, it is free. And part of the reason why I say widely adopted is because we all need help from time to time. Even I, I need help from time to time, right? When I want to know how to do something, what do I do? I go to YouTube and type in search, right? How do I do X, right? Well, when I go and I type, how do I do X for Cakewalk by Band Lab? Wow, thousand videos come up, you know? When I do, how do I do help in X in real band, right? Two videos come up and they were made by PG Music, <laughs> you know, because it's just not widely adopted. So get you a widely adopted industry standard DAW and it will save you a lot of pain, but it will also help you grow in your techniques. So as you move forward and you start recording other stuff along with your BIAB compositions, right? You know, you're using more MIDI. You're using a lot of VSTs. You know, you're recording some tracks live. You're doing multi-layered vocals. You know, it's going to come in handy. It's absolutely going to make a difference, right? So again, so my three tips are what? Number one, get you a USB interface. Number two, get you a good microphone. And number three, get you a commercial, commercial widely adopted DAW for your recording purposes. You do those things and I guarantee you that you will be more than pleased with the results that you get out of using the Band of Box product that's complemented with these other tools. And also, I think you will also be pleased with the fact that the investment that you make to do that won't be so bad. It will be absolutely minimal, okay? So, that's it for the day. Those are my three tips, and I will see you guys next time. Stay tuned to my channel, right? You can always find some neat stuff out there. And again, the links to the products, links to all the products, even the free products, are included in this video. See you guys next time, okay? Bye.